Alef, bet, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, lof, sein, chet, tet, yud, kof, chof, lamed, mem, nun, samech, ein, pei, fit, sadi, kuf, reish, shun, sin, tof, now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another lesson in our series, From the Aleph Bet, a series for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to read and understand Hebrew, especially the Hebrew that's used in the experience of Judaism here in the United States. I'm Mark Golub. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for all your emails. Keep them coming, and we'll do the best we can to respond to some of the questions you're asking about Hebrew and how Hebrew is used in the experience of Judaism. What we're doing now is really aimed at anyone who's sort of either been with us through series one of From the Aleph Bet, which was for anyone who wanted to learn the Hebrew letters and Hebrew vowels and how to put syllables together and then words together. And it's also for anyone who already knows the Hebrew alphabet, but has never had the chance to learn what the words they're saying mean. So many of us have learned how to pronounce Hebrew without learning it as a language. So what we're doing here is helping those who've never pronounced Hebrew before to be able to read Hebrew words and pronounce them. And also for anyone who wants to know more about the meaning of Hebrew, the vocabulary of Hebrew, for them we're hoping that this series, especially series two in our From the Olive Bet work, will help you understand more about what you're saying whenever you want to use Hebrew, again, in the experience of Judaism. So right now, we're working on Jewish blessings as they're expressed in Hebrew. Blessings are some of the first things young people are taught, some of the first things one would need in the experience of Judaism. And we've shown you that very often the, there is the same opening words to every Jewish blessing. And there's a shorter form, and then we're also going to work on the longer form. But let's go through the short form slowly and see if you can pronounce all the words and understand all the words we've learned so far. You see on the screen now the beginnings of the Hebrew blessing, and the first two words are always the same. Can you read the first word? Two vowels, two syllables. The word is Baruch, Mitsuyan, and it means blessed. It is the past participle of the three letter root, Bet, Resh, Kaf, blessed. And the second word is the pronoun, two vowels, two syllables, simply read. Ata, Mitsuyan. And hopefully you remember that the word Ata means you, Mitsuyan. And you put the words together, Baruch Ata, you get blessed are you. Remember in Hebrew syntax, the verb normally precedes or often precedes the pronoun. Baruch Ata, blessed art are you, or blessed art thou, you'll see in many prayer books. And then, you refers to the one being blessed, or who is blessed, and it is, and here you see the proper name of God, and we never pronounce God's name, we always say instead the word Adonai. Incidentally, some of you may pronounce this word Adonai. I've heard people who read pure Sephardic Hebrew, when, except when they see the proper name of God or the abbreviation of God's proper name, and then they don't say Adonai, which would be Sephardic Hebrew, they say Adonai. So very often you'll hear Baruch Ata Adonai. Why? Because that's the way they've heard the word Adonai since they were little children from their parents and their grandparents. And the experience of Judaism, and I want to say this over and over again, the experience of Judaism is most a family experience. 
And therefore, even though Baruch Ata Adonoi is not technically correct Hebrew because it mixes two dialects, the Sephardic and the Ashkenazic, and sometimes it's called Ashkephardic Hebrew, although it is not purely correct, it doesn't matter. It matters what makes a person comfortable. So as long as you understand there's a little bit of Sephardic, a little bit of Ashkenazic, you want to say Baruch Ata Adonoi, be my guest, and no one should make you feel like you're saying it wrong. But the pure Sephardic Hebrew would be Baruch Ata Adonai. And we know that when the rabbis created the Jewish blessings, they never would actually write God's proper name out of respect for God, and therefore they used the abbreviation of God's name, taking the first letter of God's name and doubling it, and so double yud stands for God's proper name, and we also say Adonai when we see it. And so the first three words of the Jewish blessing are Baruch Ata Adonai, and of course Adonai is our God. And the word for God in Hebrew is Elohim. And here we have, by adding the suffix nu at the end of a word, the suffix nu is a possessive pronoun, is the first person plural our, and therefore this word becomes our God. Can you read it and pronounce it? Three vowels. Remember the chataf segol under the aleph is not a vowel. We never count a shva, whether it's pronounced or silent, as a vowel. And therefore the entire first syllable is elo, mitsuyan. Second syllable, which has the accent mark under it, the vertical line next to the vowel tseri and under the letter he. And therefore... The syllable is pronounced hey, mitsuyan. The yud, since it does not have a vowel of its own, is part of the preceding tsere vowel. Hey, and the th simple nu, mitsuyan. Put the word together, eloheinu. And the words Adonai, eloheinu, is Adonai, our God, or the Lord, our God. Try now the first four words together. I'll say it first, you say it after me. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu. You try it. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu. Mitsuyan, and those four words mean, Blessed are you, Adonai our God or blessed art thou, Adonai our God, either one. And then the next two words are words you know from the first series of From the Aleph Bet. Melech is the Hebrew word for king, Mitsuyan, though we explained last time that Melech also has the sense of sovereignty in general, without gender, neither male nor female and therefore the crown and scepter representing sovereignty is also what's meant by the word melech. And olam comes from the root ayin, lamed, mem, which has the sense of infinity in Hebrew, and therefore the noun with this root has the sense of infinite space, infinite matter, everything, the universe. And we pronounce this two-syllable word as O is the first syllable, Lam is the second syllable. Put the word Olam, Mitsuyan. Olam is universe, sometimes translated as world, but world in the greater sense of universe, of everything that is. And we put the definite article in front of it, syllable ha, and that's translated as the word the in English. And ha olam is 
the universe. And the two-word phrase that you can now read and understand, Melech HaOlam, Sovereign of the Universe, or very often in the prayer book, King of the Universe. But you understand it has a greater meaning than a male king. It is ruler of the entire universe. And therefore, the first six words of Jewish blessings in Hebrew tend to be, Baruch atah, Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed art thou, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, sovereign of the universe, Mitsuyan. And those are the words which tend to begin most Jewish Hebrew blessings. And then we showed you last time a first entire blessing by adding the rest of what's called the bore, the blessing that's pronounced whenever one is about to drink wine to celebrate a joyous occasion. Wine being the symbol of joy in the Jewish tradition, and that's why almost every Jewish ceremony has a bore. One lifts a Kiddush cup and recites the blessing which ends with these three words. And we taught them to you last time. See if you can read them. The first word is two vowels, two syllables. Very simple. Bo re is correct. Bo re. Bo re is the word that means one who creates. From the Hebrew root bet resh aleph. And we showed you last time that you can imagine that the Cholom, after the first root letter, when it is in this noun form, is the number one, and therefore it means one who, and whatever the root is, and the root bet has to do with creating, and therefore bore is one who creates or a creator. And of course it refers to God as the ultimate creator. And then the last two words... Pre hagafen. Pre is a one vowel word with a pronounced shva under the pe. Pre. And the second word of the phrase, a three vowel word. Ha is the definite article, the. And the word is gafen with the accent mark under the gimel to tell us we should accent the ga in the word hagafen. And Gafen is a vine. Hagafen is the vine. Pre Hagafen is fruit of the vine. And normally it refers to grapes. And therefore the end of the blessing is Bore Pri Hagafen, creator of the fruit of the vine. And now let's do the entire blessing or Bracha, which is what a blessing is called in Hebrew, a Bracha. Let's do the entire bracha together. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Olam Borei Pri Hagafen. Blessed art thou, Adonai our God, King of the universe, Sovereign of the universe, Creator of the fruit of the vine. And that's the blessing we learned last time. I want to show you some more Hebrew words so you can do again one of, if not the most well-known of all brachot, of all blessings. Here's the first word. How many vowels? Two vowels is correct. Can you read the first syllable? Very good. Mo is correct. And the second syllable? That's a tzari. The tzari makes the TZ sound as in the word Mr. and Mrs. Katz. Tz. Tz is the second syllable, Mitsuyan. Put the word together, you get Motsi. Mitsuyan. Motsi. By the way, this is a tricky word, and I'm not going to go into how the word is created. We'll do that some other time. Let me just tell you this word means one who brings forth or brings out. 
And at some later time, I'll show you how this word, the word is derived or how the translation is derived. But for now, you'll just memorize. Motsi is the word that means one who brings out, or very often in a prayer book you'll see, one who brings forth. Motsi. And if we put the syllable ha in front of motsi, the definite article the, we get the word in Hebrew hamotzi, mitsuyan, hamotzi. And I know there are some of you already who say, oh, I know the motzi. I know the hamotzi prayer. And hamotzi is the one who brings forth, the one who brings out. And you'll already know that the next word is this word here, a word from our first series of From the Aleph Bet, a word you well know by now. The word is Lechem, Mitsuyan. The word is Lechem. And Lechem means, yes, the picture you see right now on the screen, bread. Lechem is the word for bread. And if we put these two words together, you read them as Hamotzi Lechem, Mitsuyan, which means the one who brings forth bread or the one who brings out bread, either one. In Hebrew again, hamotzi lechem. You try it. Mitsuyan, hamotzi lechem, the one who brings forth bread. And now take a look at this little word. It's a preposition in Hebrew. It's a one-syllable word pronounced as Min, Mitsuyan, or sometimes you'll hear an even shorter E under this word as if it were written Min. Either way, Min or Min. And Min means from. This is the preposition from in Hebrew. And here's another word you know from our first series of From the Aleph Bet. The word is pronounced Eretz, Mitsuyan, Eretz. And do you remember what Eretz means? Yes, it means earth or land. Eretz. And now I want to show you something very interesting. Very often you'll hear people who have been taught just how to pronounce Hebrew. Not how to read and understand it, but just to pronounce it. They'll always say, I always need vowels to be able to read a word. And the truth is, in Hebrew, Israelis, people who know Hebrew well, read without vowels, without the points, the dots and dashes, which in Hebrew are called nikudot. Professional Hebrew. Hebrew that's used by people who really know the language normally use Hebrew without the nikudot. And therefore, look at the word for earth or land without vowels. And I've said to you before, once you know what a Hebrew word means, once it's yours, you don't need the vowels. If you look at this word, you'll know it means earth or land, and that in its basic form it's pronounced Eretz, Mitsuyan. I want to show you a different word. Here's a word without vowels. Can you tell me what this word is? And if you said Shabbat, you're correct. Shabbat, here it is with the vowels. Without the vowels, with the vowels. And I want you to understand, you can read this word without vowels as easily as you can with vowels. Here's another word, without vowels. Yes, it's the word we just saw before. The word is lechem, for bread. Without vowels, with vowels. You can read and understand this word because this word is yours. Once a word is yours, you don't need vowels. Even more than that, it's easier to translate without vowels.
And I'm going to show you what happened to me as a child. And I was, again, the vocabulary was never stressed as much as we're doing here on From the Aleph Bet. But here's the word for earth or land without vowels. And I'm going to add a letter in front of the word, which you know is the definite article, the. Don't try to pronounce it. Just tell me what this word without vowels means. And of course, you've answered the earth or the land, the land or the earth. And now I'm going to put the vowels back in. And notice the vowels are no longer segol, segol under the aleph and the resh. But all of a sudden, there's a kamatz under the aleph. And therefore, we pronounce this word not ha-eretz, but ha-aretz. Mitsuyan, ha-aretz. And there were times when I would look at the word aretz. But maybe I just didn't get it. Maybe there are those of you who studied Hebrew in Talmud Torahs and you knew right away that there was no difference between the word eretz and aretz. But I would sometimes see the vowels change and assume that the word had changed, that the word had a different meaning. Without vowels, it doesn't matter. And when you go to translate, very often you should try to see the words without vowels. You'll have an easier time translating. Ha'aretz is the same as ha'aretz. It means the land or the earth. And now try this two-word phrase. Min ha'aretz. Min ha'aretz. And it means from the earth. Mitsuyan. From the earth. And now put these words together, first in Hebrew, and then tell me what these words mean. You try first, then I'll read for you. Let me try for you. The first word is hamotzi. The second word, lechem. The third word, min. And the fourth word, haaretz. Let's put the entire phrase together. Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. The one who brings forth or brings out bread from the earth. And those words conclude the blessing, which may be the most often recited blessing in all of Jewish life. The motzi, ha-motzi lechem min ha-aretz. Because any time a Jew eats bread, and for some, lechem has a larger meaning, not simply bread specifically, but in the Jewish tradition, lechem is also used as sustenance in general. Any kind of food at all, can be called lechem. And therefore, there are some Jews who will say the motzi at any meal whatsoever. There happen to be other blessings in the Jewish tradition for other types of food. But if one only knows the motzi, and only, if only one says the motzi any time one eats, one is really reciting something powerful and important, and is saying, as is true with every blessing, I appreciate the fact that I have food to eat, that I'm one of the fortunate ones in this world who doesn't go hungry, and that I'm grateful for the gift of food that I'm about to you know, eat and share with people I love. And therefore, one says the motzi before one eats at any meal certainly before one takes any form of bread. But in some homes, the motzi is used to recite, uh, is used at any time one sits to have a meal together. And the words are, ha motzi lechem min ha'aretz. And whenever you go to a simcha, a joyous occasion, a bar mitzvah, a wedding, there's always a motzi, usually the grandfather, 
has uh, receives the honor of reciting the motzi for the entire room. But it's not always a grandfather. It can be anyone. But before one eats communally, there is a communal motzi. And the entire motzi goes, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min HaAretz. Blessed art thou, or blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, sovereign of the universe, the one who brings forth bread from the earth. And again, the blessing is simply a way of acknowledging that there is the gift of food and in some way in humility, representing the fact that there's a God in this universe, a force in this universe, a yud heh vav heh, that somehow enables food to grow and people to harvest and then create, whether it's a challah or a, you know, a rye bread or a pumpernickel or a whole grain bread or wonder bread, I guess, a white bread. Whatever bread it is, however it's made, one should say, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. So you now know the two most well-known of all brachot blessings, the Borei, Baruch Ataronai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pri HaGafen, and you know the Motzi, Baruch Ataronai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaMotzi Lechem Min HaAretz. When we meet next time, we're going to show you the longer introduction to Jewish blessings, and we're then going to show you the blessing that's used in Jewish homes all over the world every Friday night when it comes time to light the candles of Shabbat. And with that, you'll have learned the three most important blessings that begin the Shabbat. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet, and remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of the series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS, a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more will be pleased to send you the entire 20-program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayn, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Chav, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Zam,